we are going to go straight into the to the next presentation so i have a quick question what what do you think of when it doesn't have to be this library or odessa college's lrc what do you think of when you think of a uh, an academic library what types of things come to mind anyone Sure. Books. Okay. The the books are still very uh, relevant. Um, if if there's one place besides the bookstore you would find it is the library, um, in different formats, of course. Okay. Technology. Uh, study spaces, study rooms and areas, uh, and uh, you, soon uh, we're going to have uh, labs upstairs, uh, maker spaces, that, that sort of thing, uh, different subject areas. Okay, so uh, there, is, there is something very real and important today that exists in our society it's called information overload and it ties into this concept called critical thinking and we, when information overload uh, has started happening especially in the early 21st century where we are now um, the the focus uh, still needs to be on the quality of your resources, not necessarily the quantity, uh, because here it is in a nutshell, it's, it's really easy to bring back uh, a thousand resources, but if none of them are going to be relevant for what you are um, either trying to find out for your common knowledge or trying to integrate into your research paper or trying to find out for your homework assignment in your course, then it's really not relevant and it's a waste of your time. So our job is to try to show you how to find the best quality resources out there and to save you time. So this all comes into where critical thinking comes into play is the, uh, the, the various states of, in the United States um, all took this on as an initiative to get students in higher education to be able to uh, think strategically, solve problems, complex problems, and be able to think through things um, and make decisions based on the information that you're provided. So it's, it's really up to you how you want to go about it, um, but we would, um, you know, just to give you a, an idea, you know, this this is called research, like a like a pro, like a boss. Um, there is an initiative out there called 60 by 30 by the Texas Higher Education Board. They are saying by 2030, 60 percent of Texans should have a higher education uh, either a degree or certificate some type of credentials that is the goal of the state that is the direction they're moving in we realize uh, midland college especially realizes there are a lot of different types of learners out there a lot of different types of subjects and um, Schol this, the academic scholarly route may not be for everybody, and that's perfectly fine. There's, a, there's also uh, various trades and technical uh, professions where somebody may thrive. So uh, we're just trying to get uh, this, all the students to, to think critically. That's, um, it often um, 
it often comes up in your courses. So we thought it was worth mentioning. Now let's let's turn back to to libraries type stuff. So what is an authoritative database? Authoritative is a fancy way of, of saying uh, that it's academic or scholarly and that it has uh, impact in your studies. It's usually one that's found in a, in a library or learning resource center collection. And we have a number of them at your fingertips, literally, on uh, LRC, I'm sorry, midland.edu slash library. And uh, if you scroll down and click on um, speedy search or go to our databases, all of those are authoritative for the most part. Um, there may be a few items in the um, information resources towards uh, the right, uh, the last tab that may or may not be as scholarly uh, but all of your databases are. And so that is, um, you know, we, we take metrics every semester, every year, and of our databases, and we see that the usage, we see different patterns. And so that's why we are promoting these very heavily. And so these are a few of your uh, most useful ones, perhaps. I mean, that's, that's really for you to, to determine based on your interests and your course of study. So here is a peer-reviewed, scholarly and authoritative. Peer-reviewed means that there are people of equal weight uh, of, of, uh, of, le of, let's say, uh, a PhD who writes it. There are PhDs or EDDs who uh, evaluate the paper before it is published, and they give, they provide back the author, a researcher with comments, and it goes back and forth. And this means that it's peer reviewed. And sometimes it's double blind, so they don't know who it is, who's submitting it, and that sort of thing. So these are taken very seriously, and you uh, can't just get published like, like so. Uh, it often takes over a year to, to get uh, for a researcher to to appear in one of these journals. And so you'll see you have uh, uh, certain types of spacing, you have credentials, you have a title, and you have a very organized, neat paper. And they're typically from five pages on, you know, up to 50, let's say. And so that that's really uh, the type of this is the type of article that you're going to get back when you go to the databases. And so that's the difference of going to Google and going to uh, Speedy Search or EBSCO or uh, any number of our TechShare databases or uh, you know one, uh, something that's more specialized like a, a ProQuest uh, Humanities Collection or something uh, or a Gale uh, virtual library, uh, something like that. So what's the difference with a uh, non-authoritative is something that can't be cited, that doesn't have scholarly impact, and that it's typically not found on a library website. So that's going to be your Wikipedia. And you could still go, you could still utilize Wikipedia, but uh, we would suggest uh, probably not putting that down, uh, not citing it as a source. It's a great place to start. Um, the other, of course, is Google. And uh, that's why we have the databases for you. This is uh, the CRAP test is uh, found in our research tools and tutorials. So if you're interested in that, we invite you to, to check that out. Now we are going to get into a very pertinent subject that, that has a, um, oh, just one thing. L let, me, let me go back real quick. There are two different types of, of research. Uh, there's, 
what you are going to be looking for in your coursework uh, from now into infinity is secondary research. So secondary means that you didn't write the article yourself or uh, it, it, that a uh, professional in the field did. And so they are coined with primary research. That is the researcher doing it themselves. And so you often find faculty that, that take on in uh, research universities that do primary research. So you're only concerned with article searching, which is secondary research. That's um, now back to, we're gonna flip uh, the switch and move on to fake news. So I pulled up something on social media a couple of weeks ago and it read like this that fake news is a lazy language be specific this is somebody who has a blog do you mean a propaganda b disinformation c conspiracy theory d clickbait so then you know i looked at at that and i tried clicking on it and it returned a 404, this website cannot be found. So that was a really good indication of, of how bogus and fake it, it was. Uh, what really, it's, uh, there have been, uh, really, this sort of fake news revolution picked up during the last presidential election. And so we can see some headlines right here that the Pope uh, shocks the world, endorses President Trump for releases statement. Now, that got almost a million hits. So the, these were actually recorded. Another one was uh, WikiLeaks, Julian Assange, uh, confirms Hillary, Hillary Clinton, sold weapons to ISIS, then drops another bombshell, breaking news, almost 800,000. So really what, what the limitation here, I mean, there, there could be uh, a fake story on anything from uh, like a measles outbreak to um, E. coli and... Um, to other types of current events and there's no research to back it up and so this is where fake news can can become very deceptive to the public now it's it's also be, it's become a, a popular thing on social media but it's it's also somewhat gotten to the point where People don't know if they're reading real or fake news. So there, you know, way back when, uh, in the last century, you would, and you could still go to the supermarket or the, you know, there's really no more newsstands or the bookstore, and you could pick up a, a National Enquirer edition, and you know what you're reading is not authentic or real. And so that's really the difference is the internet is filled with these sort of bogus news reports. Um, so what you want to do as a consumer and as a student and as a citizen is do some fact checking if it's really important to you. And, and here are a few sites. Uh, Snopes.com is, is really um, rec highly recommended 